Hi everyone, it's Donette and Deanne with Inverti.com. Hi everyone. Welcome to this week's project video featuring Kimberbell's Ginger Kitchen Bench Pillow. This uh, bench pillow CD includes the 13 embroidery designs featured in the pillow, PDF instructions for making the sewn version of the bench pillow, along with the two hooping options that are available, as well as the step-by-step -step instruction for the finished pillow, as well as the pillow insert. Like I said, there are 13 designs in this pillow. There are three gingerbread houses, each with different features, two gingerbread people, a boy and a girl, a Christmas tree, a stocking, some candy canes, two signs with sayings, and three lollipop sticks. So let's just start from the beginning. So what backing did you use? I used a medium tearaway um, stabilizer. I love the fact that the gingerbread houses are applique pieces that are done with felt. All three of them are done with felt, and it's just really simple. You put, it does the outline stitch, you put the felt down, it does the tack down stitch, and you cut it away. The felt kind of gives the houses kind of a puffy 3D effect. Yeah, kind of looks like a gingerbread cookie. Exactly, yeah. I love that some of the um, snow on the houses it, are done with glitter flex. Yeah, it made it look really like glistening, like after it is on the morning of a new fallen snow. It's really pretty and it's fun. It was fun to do. I love that. And uh, like we mentioned before, each, each house has different features. Yes, a couple of them have candy canes on them, one on the side, one on the roof. Just different things on each one. And on the candy canes, it looks like you used um, some mylar. How was working with mylar? Yes, first time really working with mylar, and it was tough for me. It kept bunch, bunching up together, and the material was over, over the edges of the hoop, and I couldn't tape it down. When I was talking to you earlier today, you gave me the suggestion of maybe a double-sided tape, and I think that might work, so I'm going to try that next time. Yeah, yeah, because you could put the double-sided tape on the inside of the hoop, which, which may help secure that mylar down just a bit. Yes, so that it doesn't bunch up together. It turned out okay, and it looks great. It just was tough to work with. Something you learned on this bench pillow, which is perfect. There's a couple different things that I learned on this, and that was definitely one of them. And, you know, you learn from your mistakes, and you learn how to try things differently. I love it. So um, on the stocking here, that was your first time using Minky. Yeah, and that was kind of different also. I ended up um, using a topper so that the stitches stayed on top of the Minky instead of going down inside the Minky. And it's a soluble topper, and it just washes away. It just worked well with the Minky to be able not to have the stitches sink down. Yeah, these signs are super cute, and I mean, they look really simple. They are really simple. Basically, the hardest thing to do on those signs is lay the fabric down and change the thread colors. You know, <laughs> it just does it all. Yeah, they're just basic embroidery ones. I love that. This does have some uh, piecing pieces, some quilting piecing pieces. How did that work? <laughs> that was another one of my mistakes. I had followed the pattern so well. And then it got to the sewing part, and I thought, oh, I know enough about sewing that, you know, I've watched my mom. I can just do this. I started piecing it all together and sewing it together, and I thought, this is going great. You know, this is this section. I'll get this section done. And I got to the point where I was supposed to sew on another block, and they were longer than each other, and I couldn't. So I had to unpick it and do it all over and Follow the instructions. <laughs> <laughs> Try to do it on your own and it just somehow didn't work. Follow the instructions and... Yep. So then you use the organza uh, to do a, a ribbon um, near the edge of the pillows. How was um, adding that organza ruffle? That was my first time working with that big of a piece of organza as well. And it was tough. The, the seam was so small that... You couldn't tape it because then you would sew over it with the stitches. And to get that off that organza once it's been stitched on is nearly impossible. It's really hard to do. I had a hard time keeping it even. So next time when you're using the organza, you recommend a larger seam allowance? Yeah. 
definitely leave myself a larger seam allowance so that I could tape it down and still sew it. That's great to know. On the lollipops, the instruction says to use some yo-yos, to make some yo-yos. Yeah, and that was kind of fun. I, you know, I like making the yo-yos. You just cut out a circle and then I do a running stitch around the edge of it, about an eighth of an inch in from the edge of the circle. And But it had rough edges and I just thought, you know what? Lollipops don't have rough edges. And so I just flipped them over and put the rough edge down. I love it. I think they look so cute. And there's so many other options you could do too. You could stuff that little thing. You could change it out for buttons. There's lots of different options you could do for those lollipops. Yeah, and I think all of those would look really cute. When you got to the embellishment part of uh, the pillow, when you were sewing on all the buttons and stuff, this one, you used a lot of the buttons out of the We Wish You a Merry Christmas button pack. Yeah, I think I used the whole pack. Then I still didn't have, you know, I wanted to add more. I thought, I'm going to go buy a star button. And I went shopping and I couldn't find it anyway, anywhere. And I came back and told you and you're like, we have star buttons. We carry all <laughs> kinds of buttons. We went through our buttons and we carry a star button. We have these cute little bulb buttons that we added to the tree, as well as some cording that we made from some Krennic um, ribbon. Um, yeah, made it look like garland, and that was really cute. Garland with the little light bulbs and the star. I think that turned out so cute. However, I think my favorite are the chocolate chip cookies. Yeah, that sign was so cute with those chocolate chip. The opening right there, they just fit in perfectly. It's like it was meant to be there. Yeah, yeah. So it's cute. So cute. I love her little dress, the little gingerbread lady's dress. And that was dual. easier to work with because it was smaller, so I could just hold it in place with my hand. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Well, I think you did an amazing job on this ginger kitchen bench pillow. It turned out really, really cute. Thank you. It was so much fun. And it looks like you learned a lot of new techniques. I did. I learned a lot of things on this pillow that will help me with future projects. It's going to be great. Wonderful. For close-up pictures of this Kimberbell Ginger Kitchen Bench Pillow, head over to our beginner's journey into machine embroidery blog on embroidery.com, where we will have links to all of the CD and the embellishment pack. Make sure you turn on your notifications, as that's how you'll know a new video is up. And as always, we love to hear your comments and suggestions, so leave those first below. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Happy stitching, and we'll see you next time. Bye! Bye!